What's up guys, Obadov here. In this video we're going to be talking about Mental Network, the recent funding round, uh, announcement of the L2, changes in the airdrop potential and we're also going to do a couple of activities here but mostly this is going to be just the discussion. As usual all links are going to be in the description but follow them at your own risk. So prior to July this year, Manta Network was basically an L1 on top of Polkadot and it was mostly marketed as fast privacy preserving L1 and probably the most known feature was the ZK SBTs like if you go to the SBT page and you can find a bunch of SBTs here and if you're completely unfamiliar with the concept of ZK SBTs these are basically soul bound tokens in your wallet that in essence verify that your wallet like your account complies with the certain uh, rules certain conditions this can be effectively anything. And this concept is not just used by Manta, for example, the well-known BABT, Binance Account Bound Token, is also the SBT. So in this example with the Binance, everybody who pays the KYC on Binance can mint this uh, soul bound token and basically it proves that you completed the KYC on Binance without actually revealing any of your personal information. So that's the whole point of SBTs, it basically proves something without revealing sensitive information. But going back to Manta, obviously the KSBTs is not the only thing they develop. They have other solutions like Manta Pay, for example, where you can take your assets private. But we're not going to discuss it here because I think for the current state of things around Manta, this is not too relevant. If we look at the funding rounds of the Manta network, uh, we can see that seed funding round actually was early 2021, which gives us that we're already like 2.5 years at least uh, in, into development. Second funding round was also in 2021, then there was an ICO and tokens from the ICO should already be unlocked if what we have on CryptoRank is accurate. And so based on timings, it was reasonable to expect that Manta will launch the token potentially in 2023 and like fully launch their products, I guess. However, late July, we had two announcements. First, that they raised another funding round. It's Series A, pretty large, 25 million with 500 million valuation, led by Polychain. And also at that time, roughly, they announcing that they're now gonna be building an L2, EVM compatible L2. And the whole thing is starting to look a little bit like a pivot. Like they pivoting from what they've been developing into actually developing an L2. However, I think it's not the pivot, it's like an addition to their previous technologies. And again, obviously everything is subjective, but I think that's the right course of action here. And I'll explain why in a minute. So now, if we check the docs, as you can see, we have Manta Atlantic, which is the layer one. Again, this is not AVM compatible, this is built on top of Polkadot. And also we have an L2, which is called Manta Pacific. This is EVM compatible L2 on top of Ethereum. Provides a scalable and inexpensive gas-free environment for ZK applications to deploy simply using Solidity. Obviously we can read more here about layer one and layer two. I will link the docs and you can do it if you are interested in that sort of stuff to go in depth here. But I actually want to drop my two cents here why I think going with layer two development and not just releasing the Manta token as the token for this L1 is the right decision. In the current state of blockchain apps, I don't think ZK SBTs are actually where they're supposed to be, meaning they're not being utilized to their potential. Even take BABT. I've seen couple apps where you could get like a stamp for having this BABT. Never have I seen the app that actually utilized that as the proof of identity, as like a KYC on chain that it's supposed to represent. And if we go back to Manta ZK SBTs, there are not too many use cases in my opinion where the 
these ZKSBTs will be useful because what are you trying to achieve with the uses of that? Like some of the stuff here doesn't make much sense even to have, in my opinion. Like take Arbitrum, early supporter ZK pass. So you can mint this if you've been eligible for the Arbitrum airdrop. And so here, why are you creating the SBT to prove something that can be proven by simply accessing the database of the eligible wallets? The only reason would be if you want to like sort of quote unquote connect your EVM compatible wallet to a non EVM compatible wallet by having this SBT on non EVM compatible chain, you can effectively verify that you have this eligibility. But this is a very, very narrow use case. And I think we are very, very early in this technology. There are a lot of teams that are currently developing, but there are not too many apps that actually utilize this. Like you can develop all you want. If nobody actually uses it, it's sort of redundant. Like, okay, it just sits there. think if they launch a token at this time, especially considering we are pretty deep in bear market, safe to say, I guess, in my opinion, this would tank hard. If you just develop the solutions, basically, you need to find other playgrounds that can utilize your solutions if you don't have your own playground. But now with this L2, that's the playground and they can bring the solutions that they already developed and create this ecosystem for ZK apps, especially because it's EVM compatible and it's fairly easy to uh, bring some developer teams to your blockchain as well, because it will require the minimum amount of adjustments from the project on other chains. And I also like the approach for building L2. They're not building from scratch. They are utilizing OP stack, which I think currently quote unquote standard in building L2s and they add in Celestia's data availability layer and also Caldera solutions for the blockchains. And so effectively you take in all of these pre-built tools, you put them together and bam, you got your own L2. On top of Ethereum, EVM compatible, supposed to be super fast with low fees. I mean, obviously we're gonna see how it goes because both Caldera solutions and Celestia uh, solutions are fairly also fairly new but very promising obviously we're gonna see how the whole thing plays out now regarding the potential launch of the token i think it's safe to say that we can move that time frame far enough into the future because they're gonna be developing their l2 on the test net for quite some time probably okay now we're gonna do some tasks on the manta pacific l2 and after that we're gonna briefly touch on the potential airdrop strategy but regarding the theoretical part be sure to comment down below with your thoughts about their decision to build l2 whether or not the whole thing is gonna be successful okay for tasks we need to breach some eth from girly to manta pacific so I'll just send one ETH. You can send any amount that you want. Okay, my transaction was completed on Girly, but this window still says waiting for deposit. What we can actually do, you can go on this specific info page and we can add the Manta chain to the MetaMask right away so we can check our balance. So my ETH actually arrived here and that window is just lagging. There are also buttons here. You can request faucet on girly. I don't know where it takes us. Let's actually try. I'm curious. Too many requests. Okay, I'm not too interested in girly, but you can try this function. Let's try to request funds on Manta says receiving font sent to our address. Okay, let's see. Okay, so we're getting 0 0.01 ETH, which is not bad. If you're trying to request again, yeah, you can only request once every 24 hours, but that's not bad actually. Now we're gonna interact with the two DeFi applications that are currently live. The first one is ZKX, that's a multi-chain order book DEX. And second one is gonna be Izumi Finance. Let's connect the wallet first.
Okay, here it says we are on Manta testnet. Interface here changed a bit from the last time I interacted with this one. ZKX faucet. Okay, let's do some USDC. Oh man, it says 218 users are ahead of me in the queue. So it should take around seven minutes to process. Okay, while we wait our funds on ZKX, we can do some swaps and liquidity on Izumi Finance. Here, make sure that you are on Manta Pacific Testnet. And we can do some swaps first of all. What's available? Easy USDT. Let's do ETH to USDT. Right, it seems like there is no liquidity here. Okay, we can swap ETH to Easy. All right, and I will also provide some liquidity. Okay. Liquidity. Easy ETH. Can we do this one? Okay. That should work. I just want to test the functionality a little bit. That everything works fine. Okay, this has been added. Now let's remove some of that. I'll remove 50%. Okay, we're done with easy swap now, just waiting on ZKX tokens. Okay, 30 minutes later, tokens still haven't arrived. Uh, let's briefly touch on the potential airdrop strategy here. So now we obviously have L1 and L2 to play with potentially. Regarding the L1, pretty much strategy I think remains the same. If you can mint as many ZK SBTs as possible, you don't really lose anything here. All you need is to connect your Manta wallet and the gas is being covered for you. There's really no downside for that. There are also regular campaigns on Galaxy where you get awarded the OATs. The only problem with these campaigns that they are all capped in participants. They currently, majority of them have the cap of 10k participants and these 10k usually feel relatively fast so you have to be quick. And regarding the L2, obviously strategy is usually on chain. However, keep in mind that we are in the testnet and not just on the testnet, we are very early on this testnet. And usually for L2's testnet, either they don't have any incentives whatsoever, or this is a very, very limited amount that usually actually attributed to other applications that are building on testnet. So you can potentially get some incentives from these. But obviously in general, there is no point to do a lot of on-chain tasks. I'm just personally gonna play with the dApps when they come into Manta Pacific ecosystem because I wanna see how Manta's L2 play out and development in general, because that's quite different from the L2s we are interacting now. Here, I'm not gonna wait any longer for testnet tokens. I'll just leave it be and maybe tomorrow if they arrive, I'm gonna do a couple transactions. And we already interacted with ZKX previously, so you shouldn't have any issues uh, placing your orders here. That's all I wanted to cover in this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to drop your thoughts uh, on Mental Network in the comments down below or your questions if you have any. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.